Okay, people, right? I'm so excited tonight, hey. right? Because uh, on our Blitz to Bootcamp series calls, tonight we have a very, very special guest. Uh, we, I've never interviewed him before. Uh, he's all the way from Romania, Mr. Marius Vogel over there, everybody. Say hi to everyone, Marius. Hey, what's up, Dennis? Hey, everyone. Yes, nice so, to see you. So it's, jumping it's in, jumping in. Yes, yes. It's a real honor to have you on the call tonight. Um, you know, I don't know much about your background, uh, but I do know that you know, uh, the, the whole market of Romania is here today because of you and your lovely wife. And uh, you know, the whole uh, European market is on fire now because of you guys and the success stories that we're getting out of uh, Romania and all over Europe. So uh, we are so excited to hear a story, man. Please uh, let everybody know uh, where you came from, what did, what did you do, how did you meet World Ventures, how your life has changed, right? And um, uh, like, uh, you know, how, how the trainings, especially the most important, the boot camp trainings, uh, has uh, helped you in your business. All right, Mario? Uh, Mario? Sorry, Mario. <laughs> Sorry, I was playing the... Got it. Sorry, I was playing the Mario video on YouTube for my son. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so go ahead, Mario. Sorry, we're excited. Let's hear it from Mario, everybody. That, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, hello, everyone, again. I'm so blessed and honored that you, Dennis, first of all, thank you for organizing... Uh, all these webinars with huge leaders and I'm so humble and blessed that you, you invited me to be on this call so always grateful. Uh, I've actually met Venice a few times at international events and this is one of the big parts uh, that the events are contributing to improving our life to our circle of influence. So uh, for those of you that don't know me and I suppose most of you um, I will take one, two minutes to introduce myself. I'm an IT engineer as profession. I've been working for almost all my life. I've been, uh, when I was a student, I've, I've done the um, um, Polytechnics uh, University in Bucharest, that's the capital of Romania, telecommunication uh, university. And uh, from the second summer, between the summer between the second and the third year, I, I went first time in the United States with a work and travel program. I was a student, uh, we were having summer jobs. For me, that, that was a huge experience. So in the second year, we were working for like two months and a half. For those of you that don't know what the work and travel program means for students, we were working for two months and a half and then we were traveling for two, three weeks. So I've done that three summers in a row and uh, I've seen from the United States Bahamas, cruises in the uh, Caribbean, New York two times, Washington DC, Miami Beach, Virginia Beach. And that was an awesome experience. So I was coming back and that was the moment when I realized that I do not want to like keep, let's say, staying on my parents' money. So uh, I got a job from the third year of university. The university was five years plus two years master. I also did a master. So I was an employee for my third year in the university and actually my first job was in a call center for a telecommunication company where we were taking like 60, that six zero phone calls per day from people that were complaining that something was not working properly, right? Uh, either the television or the phone data or... So I, I could only stay there for like four months. There was this like huge negativity and i'm not saying those people were not right some of them really had huge issues with their television band and internet band and stuff like that right but some of them they, they were not realizing that we were there to help them right and they were trying to fight us over the phone like was our fault that there was a storm outside let's say and the signal was not working so anyway i stood there for only four months and then i moved in another job on network administration that was, let's say, closer to what I was doing to the university and then to another job and then to another job. And in 2007, I first time read Reach That Poor Dad from Robert Kiyosaki. And that was the moment when I realized, like, man, from a job, I will never be free. I will never have my financial freedom and time freedom. So I started to understand since then what, what passive uh, income means. So. Uh, that's why in 2008, 
that was the last, the fifth year of university. Together with my girlfriend back then, which now is my wife, we have a beautiful family. I have a daughter of six years uh, and a half. So together with her, we say, look, we're going to need to buy an apartment anyway. Let's buy a second one to rent it, right? Like Robert Kiyosaki was doing from real estate, getting passive income every month, every month. So that was something huge for us. And we, we gathered together at that point, point around $35,000 from our salary, we put it on the side. So we use that to pay in advance, right? For the two apartments, one to live in, and the second one to buy it as an active in order to bring passive income. So we did that again, it was 2008. We took our apartment, we took the other one. They were both in a residential complex in Romania, uh, two room apartments, both of them. So. Uh, on our apartment, we only had one couch and one fridge for one year. That's all we live in. But was still better than the campus where I was living for close to five years for the university. Check this out. In the campus, and it's going to make a lot of sense. In the campus, there were room for four people, right? But we are five because there are more students than the availability for rooms, right, for students. So we had five beds and three of us had girlfriends so we were living mostly eight people in a room of four so when i was going to a let's say a two-star resort for me that was like wow that's a two-star resort that's a three-star resort it was amazing man so uh comparing that with the experience that i had in united states traveling the so i've done the five-star resort the four-star resort but i've also done like going on the mountains or going for the two star or even one star hostel somewhere. So I've experienced this kind of travel. So getting back to the story, the second apartment, we bought it and we made like, we, we use uh, personal credits and uh, credit cards to furniture the apartment so we can rent it. And it actually cost us close to $100,000 in order to rent it with close to $500 a month. It was 450 euros, but let's say that's equivalent to like $500 a month. So we pay like $100,000 for a passive income of $500 a month, right? From which part like 360 were covering uh, the, the rent to the bank, right? The bank rate and the, the difference was let's say the real passive income that was coming every moment so that was what what was happening i did change some jobs and in 2009 the end of 2009 i went for the first time without a job uh creating and founding my own company we were doing actually mobile application for clients outside romania in switzerland in belgium some in uk in france some in romania and I remember we've invested, but the most that I've invested was my time and my knowledge, right? Because I was giving up a salary that I was having each month in order to gain my freedom, which it didn't happen because nine out of 10 companies closed in the first five years, right? I was one of the nine that closed in the first five years. So that was, that was something that I saw that at that point and um, I was working like 14, 15 hours a day. My employees were working nine hours a day. I was making a little bit more money than from my job, right? But I had even less time. So when I closed that company, because I was not a salesperson, I'm not a salesperson, I couldn't bring more clients in the company. So I was coming with money from home, earned from previous months the profit in order to pay the employees and the salaries. I had to close it. And my wife got pregnant, so I had to, to get a job. So uh, I started to work again as a project manager in IT. I changed two companies in four years. So I was working like two years and two years. And actually on 24th of March, 2014, my wife called me. I was at the office, she was at the office. So my wife called me and she said, hey babe, uh, our friend Irina called me and she said, uh, you know, uh, Elena invited me to see an idea. I want you to come with me. So I was not invited for, from a member to see World Ventures. 
my wife was not invited by a member to see World Ventures or Dream Trips. Our friend Irina was invited and she called my wife, hey, come with me, right? And uh, by the way, this is actually a nice idea when you invite someone, right? Like, hey, uh, I want you to see some, something huge. Take someone with you. Like, hey, also call a friend, take him with you. Because who knows, maybe the friend is actually more interested than the person that you're actually invited. So my wife went, she saw the presentation, she saw a video, I believe it was a video from vacation sooner at that point. She saw a video in English, she got home excited, 9.30 in the evening. I was already home for like two hours, okay? I was staying with our daughter that was close to two years old at that point. And uh, my wife entered the door, and this is how I found out about World Ventures. Hey, babe, I saw this huge idea. We're going to travel all around the world, and in two years, we are going to become millionaires. Now, think about it. I'm an engineer. I was a project manager dealing with budgets, right? So I had a huge green for those of you that knows the, the colors from Mr. Mark Atleta, personality test. Green is an analytical person. I was very analytical. I had my own business that, uh, it went bankrupt and I was frustrated that she was late for two hours, right? And our daughter was asking, where is mommy, where is mommy, where is mommy, right? So she came home and she said, we're going to become millionaires and we're going to do this and that and we're going to travel around the world. She was excited, man. And my reaction was like, come on, leave me alone with this. We don't have time. We were working nine hours every day as employees, but we were making three more hours one hour and a half on the way to the job, one hour and a half coming back from the job. So that was my reaction. My wife's reaction, Stefania Fulgu, was, you know what? I didn't came home to ask you if you're going to join. I came home to tell you that I'm going to join. So I'm like, okay, do whatever you want. We are making at that point, let's say close to $6,000 together. I was making a little bit less than her. So she joined, right? It took her one week to get me to a presentation to what we call now a travel party, right? And there were like 20, 30 people and she was like, come on, you have to see it. No, I don't want to see it, I don't care. Come on, you have to see it, you have to see it, you have to see it, you have to see it. And I'm like, okay, let's go and see it. So um, I went, I saw a presentation, I was sitting on the last available chair and what I remember from the travel part, there were two things, one, the price guarantee, which for me as an analytical person at that point was meaning that it was taking away, right, the, the competitors in the travel industry because in the end I'm going to have the best price on the market anyway, even if I'm only travel once or twice a year. And the second thing that I remember, there were no trips in Romania. There were only a few trips in Europe. I remember there was a trip in Cancun at Hard Rock Resort in Cancun, which was six days, five nights. $660 minus 330 points. And once you did the check-in at the resort, you're receiving a $700 voucher for casino and spa and beauty salon. And my reaction was like, okay, because at that point we are not traveling that much. We're making only one vacation per year in Turkey, Greece or Bulgaria, the neighbor countries of Romania. And my reaction was, okay, so instead of going in Turkey with the same money, we're gonna go in Cancun. This actually doesn't sound that bad. So. That was an okay for the travel part. What happened in the last five years, I just came back from my 70, 70 vacation. And that was on five different continents. It, it's amazing. And thinking that five years ago, I was only traveling once per year, that's a huge difference. Now, what made the difference? Because in the end, I didn't join for the travel part. I understood the travel part. I understood the benefits but my wife was already a member. What got me was, remember the, the apartment that I bought in 2008 for the $500 passive income? The bitch that put that book? My mind went directly to the passive income opportunity, the business side of World Ventures. So that was what, what, what got me at that point. And uh, I'm actually um, having a, a very nice story because Although I realized that I didn't understand when my wife came home in my first month in the business, I didn't invite my friends to travel party. I was like, I'm the project manager. I'm going to tell them. I'm like, they're my friends. They're going to understand. 
And I was going to my friends like, hey, Dennis, let's suppose that Dennis was one of my friends back then or one of my co-workers in the office. And I was like, hey, Dennis, check this out. I entered this club. You pay a few hundred dollars to enroll for, you pay no more. In two years, you're going to become millionaires and you're going to travel all around the world. And my friends and co-workers are like, bro, did you smoke something? Are you on crack? Like, what happened? Because they didn't get it, right? They didn't understood the idea. So in my first month, I got more than 20 no's. But those were not real no's because they don't even see the, they didn't even see the presentation. I was just storytelling them, right? Like, um, in, imagine the, the movie Titanic, right? Instead of inviting you to see the movie Titanic, I was like, hey man, look, is this movie is called Titanic, is Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, he's a poor young guy, he went on the biggest cruise ship at that point, he met a curly red hair girl, they fall in love, they, they make love in a car, you see a hand on the car, and uh, in the end, the ship sinks, and he dies, right? So I was, this is how I, how, how I was storytelling World Ventures. I was not inviting my friends to understand it, right? So if you tell that to a friend, you story tell the Titanic, most probably they will be upset on you because uh, they, like you told them the ending, right? It was not a surprise. And uh, most of us agree that Titanic is actually a really good movie. Okay, so on May 3rd, that was one month and three days after I joined, and when you get like 20 something no's or you feel it's a no, there are two things hap that were happening in my mind. One was like the club is not working and it's bad and this and that. And the second one was I'm not doing something right. But I couldn't, like my ego at that point couldn't accept that I was doing something wrong, right? I was like, no, this club is not working, blah, 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 right? So. I was still doing the right thing in my mind and the club was the wrong one. So actually what happened on May 3rd, I had the chance to go to my first like Super Saturday training in Romania. Uh, we had the Super Saturday with IMD Million Dollar Ring Earner, um, Stavros Zinonos from Cyprus. At that moment, he was not, he was already an IMD, but he was not a Million Dollar Ring Earner, right? And my reaction and he was for like three years in the company. He was not in the beginning of the market in Cyprus. He signed up in June 2011 and the club was open in Cyprus from 2009. So that was two years after it officially opened in Cyprus. And he was, let's say, making like 30, 40,000 US dollars a month as an IMD. That's, that's the average. And in my mind was like, if that guy makes 30, 40,000 US dollars a month, even if I am 10 times weaker than he is, if I'm going to apply what he did and what he teaches it means that i'm going to be able to make at least 10 percent of what he's making that's let's say four or five thousand dollars a month so i wrote down i remember 18 pages one eight and that was the fundamental for everything i apply and the results that i got in world ventures now what was the difference and this is something huge it was May 3rd. At the end of that event, there were like 70 people in the room. 30, 40 of them were members. The, the rest were guests of the Super Saturday event. And Stavros, at the end of the event, mentioned, look, right now I gave you everything. I, I, I teached you what I know, what I apply, and what worked for me. But if you really want to take this business serious, and I'm going to tell you now to all 70 of you, this is what he said. I'm going to tell you now to all 70 of you, the, let's say if there will be one secret, this would be it. I connect it to the training system of World Ventures. I'm a product of World Ventures. And he promoted the next event, which was a boot camp in Amsterdam in June 13 to 15, 2014, 2014. And he said, although there are 70 people here in the room, only a hand or two hands full of you will take what I told you right now and will come at that event. And I look in the room and I realize that most of them were not going to take it serious. So that, that's the reason why I decided with my wife and we had one member then, because we to go to the bootcamp in Amsterdam.
So that was a moment of decision because I didn't want to live the life that the other 70 were living. I didn't want to be the average of that. I wanted to have the life of Stavros. I wanted to have a life like Danny said. I wanted to have a life like Sir Erwin, like uh, Matt Morris, like Johnny Wembley, like Julio Acosta. I wanted to have that kind of life, right? So that's why I took the decision to go in Amsterdam. Now, check this out. The next event right now, it's a bootcamp series. In Europe, it's going to be 7 to 9 uh, of June in Dublin. That this coming weekend, on, uh, on Friday morning, I'm flying to Dublin. And that is, I believe, right now my sixth bootcamp event. On my first event, it was me, my wife, and our first enrollment was Mintronar, which now he's a regional marketing director. At our second event, it was a view from the edge where we were like 12 people. At the third event, 30. The fourth event, 60. At the last event, we were more than 400. And at this bootcamp in Dublin, more than 500 people from the team. Why? Because I cannot teach you what Marka Seta can teach you together with the training. I cannot give you the energy that a room full with three, four thousand people can give you. I cannot put you in a, in, a, in a position to win as you will be in the same position to win by coming from an event. And uh, just finishing with the event, there were some, some more people from Romania there from other teams at that event, but uh, there was no translation in English at that point. And one of them, which was a senior rep, he was one of the leaders in Romania. Actually, he was my upline there were two uh, senior reps in Romania on May 3rd, 2014. One was Jetta Voina, and the other guy was, uh, the other person was a guy called Sergio. So Jetta Voina and Sergio had two different teams. I was in Sergio's team, right? So Sergio also came at the event as a senior rep, Jetta Voina with Razvan Dinko, which are now international marketing directors, also came at the event. But Sergio, because he couldn't understand English, instead of sitting next to one of us and telling us, hey, translate me because there was no translation in Romanian at that time. He was like, you know what? You stay here, listen, understand, get the information. I'm going to walk and have fun in Amsterdam when, when we're gonna meet tonight. You let, us, let me know what they said here. And that was our leader, man. That was our upline. We were looking up to him like he was like, and, and I couldn't believe that. And that was the first moment when I realized I have to choose someone else to follow. So first rule, it's pay attention to whom you pay attention, right? That's the Marc Aceta thing. Pay attention to whom you pay attention. For those of you who don't know who Marc Aceta is, he's our international director of training. Uh, my mentor, like amazing human being. He loves what he did, and he made in World Ventures tens of million of people that, uh, that made more than $1 million. So that's huge. So at that moment, the, in, in that bootcamp training in Amsterdam, there was a person, uh, there was one of the trainings that was saying the following, why do you choose to lose when you have the vehicle to set you and your entire family tree free? And in my mind, like that, that shaped my whole world. I was looking at my wife, I was looking at Cosmin, the guy that was with us, right, our partner. He looked at us, my wife looked at me, and without speaking, that was a moment of decision that no matter how long it will take, no matter the abilities we have to, to learn, no matter the obstacles we have to pass, we are going to finish the race. It was one decision, man, one decision. So we came home, we crashed it, in six months, I resigned from my job. I did it for six months part-time. And um, yeah, from the friends that told us, yes, now we have a team of more than 6,600 members in more than 10, 15 countries all around the world. So I'm blessed, humbled, 70 vacations. And um, actually one good point would be when I sign up in Europe, there were more than 1,000, 100,000 members that sign up prior to that in Europe, okay? I'm not exactly sure of the numbers, but let's say there were around 100,000 uh, members. And many of them, maybe 1,000, they had better communication skills than I had. They had better circle of influence than I had. They had, I don't know, better 
training abilities. Maybe they had more money. Maybe they had more time. But I had the burning desire to change something. I didn't want to live an average life. So that's the reason why we did it. Wow. Wow. That's really awesome, man, Marius. Especially listening to your story. Uh, it's so, so emotional. Charging, charging us up, okay, uh, and motivational. Uh, so, but uh, you know, I, I remember I was in uh, Romania, in Bucharest with you yeah. guys uh, some time back. Uh, really love your city, such a beautiful city, such a beautiful country. Um, but I realized that, um, you know, you guys had faced so much difficulty uh, during this journey because of translation, language issues, uh, no trips, and even... Uh, even uh, a lot of people may not know this, even the average uh, income uh, in Romania is really not that high compared to other places in Europe, am I right? Yeah, yeah, it's around, let's say, $350, $400 a month. Yes, okay, so that, that, is, that is a real challenge for people and you know, we always have people complaining, uh, even in Asia, all over the world, I can't come up with the money, I can't come up with the time to go to the boot camp, to go to the training. But you guys faced it. Can you share with us how you uh, overcame that, you know, and how your team uh, benefited yeah. so much you know, from that? Yes. I'm, 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 I'm heating up. <laughs> so check this out. Check this out. I'm in a McDonald's, right? You see the M sign here. This is a coffee. And I actually came to do this, this call from here, from the McDonald's. Then it's because I wanted to make a point. And... If you pay attention for the next three, four minutes, you're going to get it. A McDonald's franchise costs, in average, $1 million. That's in average. That's not in Singapore. That's not in Romania. That's the average all over the world, right? $1 million investment. Then you do the investment. Let's suppose that you have the $1 million. Let's, let's just say that you have it. You make the investment, and then the average profit per year is $250,000. Right? That's a quarter of a million dollars average profit. Again, not in Singapore, not in Romania. That's the average profit all over the world for a McDonald's franchise per year. Profit meaning after they deduct the cost with, um, with the um, utilities, with the employees, with whatever they, they spend, right? The, the cups and, and, and all that stuff. They make a profit of $250,000 sale. Now, check this out. It means someone that invested $1 million expects in average to have in four year, years that ROI, return on investment, and then to be on profit a quarter million dollars per year. Okay, you get it? Now, remember that training on May 3rd, Stavros Zinonos, Romania, 2014. I was seeing a guy that in less than three years, not four years, with an investment of four, four, $400 back then, with no trips in Europe, when he started, in three years, he got to an average of around, let's say, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 per month, which is, in one year, it's, let's say, three hundred to $500,000 profit, which means, let's say, half a million, let's, let's just suppose that, half a million, which means the, he was getting the return from what would he had invested, let's say, in two McDonald's franchises, $2 million. The difference was he invested only $400 to join World Ventures. You get it? Now, if you have the chance to earn from World Ventures what you would earn from an investment of $2 million, would you be smart enough to go to a training and find the money, let's say $1,000, $1,500, Right, together with the airplane ticket and the hotel and the, the event ticket, would you be smart enough? And this is a question that I asked myself back then. Am I smart enough if I want his lifestyle, if I want those money to invest, to learn how to build this business as a business? And my reaction was yes. And yes, we did a sacrifice back then. It cost myself like a $1,000 for that bootcamp in Amsterdam, my wife, like a $1,000 uh, together with the plane ticket and, and all that stuff. But so let's say $2,000 that we invested in us to learn. But what was the cost that I was paying if I was not going? 
close to three hundred thousand dollars that we did so far from the club. Seventy vacation, a different way of thinking, and totally this is like this is a, a weekday, and I'm having the time of my life. Right in the morning today, I got my daughter to the to the school, spending the time with her. So this is this is the freedom. But what was the cost that I was paying? If I was not making the effort to invest that one thousand dollars to go to that boot camp, so I'm not saying it's it's easy to become millionaire, especially from all ventures, but it's not easy to remain broke from a, broke from a job either for forty years, right? So yeah. let's say it's hard. It's not that hard. Here we have a coffee. We show. Uh, a beautiful concept to our friends and family, and they choose if they want to join or not. Right? Hard, from my point of view, is going for 40 years to the same office, and even if you change the jobs, it's still an office or or a place where you have a boss, where you have uh, like those papers where you ask for holidays. Hey, can I have a good holiday from here? I didn't want to live my life like that. I didn't want. I wanted freedom, man. And that is the price of freedom. And you know what's crazy? Most people pay for a phone one thousand dollars because it's cool to have the last iPhone X, right? But they are not ready to pay for the freedom one thousand dollars. Wow! Thank you so much, Marius. You know, uh, from uh, businessman to project manager, and then now to international marketing director, living the life of your dreams. So uh, just one, uh, just share with uh, all these people that are still thinking, you know, whether they should get themselves and the teams to boot camp. So just share like one uh, sentence, you know, uh, what was the number one thing that that uh, you learned uh, from uh, our, our boot camp training that changed your life forever? And maybe just a, just a quick, quick summary, quick point, yeah? Look, and um, okay, look, look me in the eyes, right? Look me look me straight into my eyes there were moments when i was i was going maybe to another city to help a team and i was a senior rep or a director and i didn't have money to put gas in the car there were moments when i was leaving bucharest and i was getting to a city and i was supposed to spend the night there and i didn't have 30 40 dollars in my pocket to rent a room or to buy a hotel room, even a, a two-star or, or three-star room, right? So there were moments when I was leaving my daughter at home for five or six or seven or two weeks, right? Seven days or two weeks. And I was not seeing her in order to, to go and build. There were moments when like people were quitting and I couldn't understand why they were quit quitting. And I realized that what made the difference was the decision, was the burning desire, and was I, was I was ready to do whatever it took, man, whatever it took to finish the race. And now some of you say, hey, but you are an IMV now, you finished the race. You know what? I haven't even started yet. That's, that's the real, this is the real game. Until now was the warm-up. Then he, then he says uh, the double IMB, the million dollar ring earner. I'm following him. I want to be like that. I want to learn from him. If you are in Asia, go to the bootcamp event and learn from him. Get the information from him, from the other trainers, from Mark Asita. If you want to have that, I want to have that. I'm ready to do whatever it takes. I don't want to live a life like a, filled with mediocrity. And it's easy to live a, a life in mediocrity because you don't have to do anything in special. Most people, will, they have a car, okay? I had a car, I had a good life before World Ventures. I was making five, six thousand dollars per month together with my wife, that's above the average in Romania. I was saying like in the first 5% of Romania, I had a car, it was not my dream car, but it was taking me from point A to, to point B. I had a house right? It was not the dream house that I had. It was an apartment in a residential complex with two rooms. That's it. It was a house. Our, we have utilities. We have light. 
we have uh, gas, we have electricity, right? And most people, by the way, when the bill comes at the end of the month, you are like, oh, the bill came again. Be thankful, be grateful that you have the electricity and you don't have to use a candle like 500 years ago, right? Be grateful for what you have. And most of us have friends, but they are not the kind of friends that push you to become better, to be better, to live the best, uh, the best way that you can possibly live this life. We only have one life, okay? If you, and I'm sorry for the language, but if you F it up, if you F it up, you cannot make double two. This is not a Hollywood movie, man. This is your life. You have one chance. But if you live it as you are supposed to, live the greatest life that you can live, one is enough. So go to the bootcamp. You don't have the money, sell something. Sell a laptop. Sell your phone. Do whatever it takes to be there. Learn. Be on student mode. Learn and think in your mind that you have to teach what you learn the following day to others, right? So have the student mode and the future trainer mode of learning, applying, and teaching further, pass it further, and you will see that you, you will not only change your life, you will change lives of generation after you, but more than that of people that you don't even know at this point will be thankful for you and, and to you because at some point you took a decision to live an extraordinary life. And for that, you need an extraordinary effort and uh, the effort is the most fun thing you can ever do in your life. Thank you so much, Marius. I am the Marius Bugu, everybody from Romania, Bucharest. Uh, as you were Thank you so much, Dennis. Fat, I know that that song, uh, have you heard of that, that song by Imagine Dragons? Whatever it takes. Yeah. <laughs> Keep coming. Definitely. Man. Yeah. All right. So, guys, uh, send your love, uh, your roses, your big hugs on the Facebook uh, comments. And, you know, uh, send out your love. Shout out to Marius. Thank you so much, Marius. Thank you time. so much, guys. All right. You have Dennis, a great day. I really appreciate you too, man. And I'm, I'm seeing you all at boot camps. Check this out. There are people from Romania that are coming at the boot camp in Kuala Lumpur. Wow. That's awesome, man. Make you, sure to get them. You know to why? Yeah? You know why? Because, and, and people from some uh, countries next to Romania that they need visa to go in the one in Dublin, in Ireland, they yeah. couldn't get the visa. And it cost them twice as much to come in Kuala Lumpur than the play ticket to Dublin, by, but they do it anyway. You know why? Because they don't know how to accept excuses, especially from themselves. Wow. So I'll see you all at bootcamp and, and let's live the best life that we can possibly live and wow. on the journey to impact as many people as possible. Wow. My heart fantastic, man. to you seeing on the beaches of the world. Bye-bye. Love you. Love you, brother. So Dublin bootcamp happening in Europe this uh, coming weekend, right? So thank you, Marius. Everybody, that's it. Uh, see you in bootcamp. Go IMD.